Thank you, Rick. That was great. Men and women around the world, thank you for your service. By the way, as you leave or as you take a break, there are free Axe samples uh, by the door to help you enjoy your evening tonight. Uh, I am very excited about the next company. Uh, I've been following it for a long time. Uh, we're going to hear about this company that's just moved from concept to reality, actually mixed reality. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with Wall Street Journal's uh, Laura O'Reilly and the CMO of Magic Leap, Brenda Freeman. Please help me welcome them to the stage. mic trouble. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning. Right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We made it the last day of Web Summit. <laughs> and speaking of long waits, I'm here with the CMO of Magic Leap, Brenda Freeman. Um, hey, everybody. Hello. So, so obviously, after much anticipation, Magic Leap is finally out there in the market. And I believe we have a short video right now just to show you what the technology is all about. We do. Let's go right ahead. Up. Let's watch the video. I believe we do. <laughs> or perhaps not. Perhaps we'll just uh, do a little tap dance or something while we wait. Um, anyway, while, while we wait for the video to come up. So um, as I was saying, much anticipation, a lot of hype. Um, how does it feel to finally have the technology out in the market? As a marketer, I guess it helps to have a product to actually you know, sell. Right. No, absolutely. It's like, so in terms of hype, you know, I think any company that has a certain amount of funding gets hype uh, you know, associated with it. Um, but I would say we're really excited about the fact that we have launched, and so we've very much pivoted from being an R&D company, which really since 2011, uh, for its first six years of our company's existence, we were very inwardly focused on making sure that one, we could get the tech and miniaturize it so that it was small enough to be able to fit on your head. Um, we had to make sure that we were able to perfect the software stack and content and once we were ready to be able to really speak to the world and, and show our product, we began our really marketing in earnest. And that's when I really started with the company about two years ago. So I don't know if we actually have the video yet. Are we I'm hoping to we might it? have a video. I'm not sure. Let's okay. look. Here we go. So that was cool, kind of interesting, right? right? I mean, that's really uh, an example of a musical experience with ones and zeros. It's like Tanandi um, is Icelandic for music spirits. And uh, that was a collaboration that we did with a, a band that some of you may know uh, called Sigur Ross. Um, and it was really an opportunity for them to be able to express their music in a totally different way with gestures and ultimately your room coming to life. So each time that you experience it, the music interacts with you because of the fact that Magic Leap really is a product that uh, you know, basically is mixed reality. How many of those in the room are aware of what mixed reality is? Show of hands. Okay, that's what I thought. Maybe about 20, 30% of you or so. so. So basically, mixed reality is in the space, which is what we're calling now the XR space. There's virtual reality, there's augmented reality, and there's mixed reality. Virtual reality is a type of experience where you put the device on and I don't see you in the room. I see nothing but an immersive digital experience. Augmented reality is really something that usually takes place on a tablet or on your phone. I'm basically taking my experience that's on the phone and I've got you know, some sort of interesting digital experience that's happening on top of that. Mixed reality is I actually have sensor cameras. There's 
computer vision, and there's dense meshing because there's five cameras that are actually in this device. And the three of the cameras are really spacing, basically meshing your room. Um, that's basically the spatial part of spatial reality. And essentially, if I put digital objects into that room, it has context, which means those digital objects know what's physical mm -hmm. and it knows me. So I can drop a digital ball, let's say on this couch here, and that ball could bounce and actually roll off of the couch. Or I could speak to a digital human from a communications perspective, and that digital human could come and sit next to me on this couch. And if I perhaps, you know, lean in a little too close into, uh, you know, that person's, that digital person's digital space, they could actually, you know, react like that. So that is what mixed reality is, and that's what we have uh, just recently launched. Great. And so, Brenda, as Magic Leap CMO, I wanted to ask you about the marketing. And one thing I didn't get a sense of from that video is, what is the Magic Leap brand and brand voice? Yeah. And now often for tech startups, the brand and brand voice is the founder. Is that the case with Magic Leap? Yeah, it's like very much a lot of the core of what Magic Leap is, I would say, is our founder, Roni. But if I had to describe you know, the overall brand attributes that we're launching with, it is we're inside out. Uh, which is we, we have within our organization such an example, such an extreme example of left brain, right brainers. I think that's truly unique for most technology companies. We have storytellers, special effects artists, uh, you know, lots of creatives, but at the same time, we have PhDs, we have scientists, folks from NASA and things like that. That's, that's very much uh, our founder. Um, and I would say that's very much for most of those that are, uh, you know, that work at the company, we we have a, a strong appreciation for uh, creative, and so the idea of the technology really being there to improve my life, we're much more about a humanistic type of technology company, and I would say that very much stems from our founder. For those of you that don't know Roni Abovitz, it's like take a look at some of his blogs, and you'll get a sense really of, the, you know, sort of like the essence of the brand that we're bringing to life now. What's he like to work with? Roni's awesome. It's like you zen with Roni, uh, because like I said, you know, Roni is probably one of the most uh, extreme left brain, right brain people that I know in terms of him being an extremely, uh, you know, brilliant technologist, uh, but he's also extremely uh, creative. And he is, you know, he's got vision that's pretty much like an infinity. And then basically he brings along, you know, uh, folks like me, you know, in the company who are able to sort of operationalize, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that creativity. Sure. And outside the company, who are Magic Leap's biggest advocates? Is it developers? Is it brands? Normal people? Yeah. So, so right now we are, we're not really selling to a lot of you in the audience right now. We are very much on the journey of what we're calling crawl, walk, run. Um, and so when we launched uh, this summer, we, we launched basically to developers and creators, those that are going to actually create it, those experiences on the platform. And once we get enough of those everyday use cases that we are able to then, you know, sell it uh, to consumers. Sure. So we, we had a uh, developer conference that was uh, just about a month ago. Um, we, it was a three hour keynote. Uh, because we had so many different uh, partners who we were able to basically announce and they could show their experiences. We had uh, demos, uh, you know, pretty much uh, throughout the day so that you could get a sense of the art of the possible with a number of different partners that we had quietly been working with for, for many years. And can you talk about some of those interesting brand partnerships? Again, obviously early days, but there have been a few. Sure, sure. So um, we actually do have a little trailer of one. Oh yeah, we can um, get so a video. Maybe we could that give a little example. It's like, uh, and it's one that you probably would not necessarily think of because, uh, you know, certainly in this space, you think of disrupting the art of gaming. Uh, you know, you're disrupting the art of uh, entertainment, um, which we have amazing partnerships in those spaces. But uh, what, I, what I wanted to share with you guys today is, is the fact that we're starting to work with partners to disrupt, uh, you know, a, a vertical like fashion. So recently, H&M uh, with Warp and Media did a collaboration with Moschino. Uh, and they did a, uh, you know, a special experience in New York. Um, and there's a little tiny bit of a trailer that we wanted to show you to just to sort of get a sense of 
you know, the, the level of experimentation that's happening right now. So Have we got we... this trailer now? Great, thanks. It's mosquito. <laughs> so that was just a little. That was just a little sample. But you know, again, this idea of allowing creatives to develop and experiment on a totally different medium with a different platform. So we're really encouraging, uh, you know, that type of exploration, and it's been. Um, you know, really a great journey and just know that we are open for other developers and creators to come work with us. Is it fair to say that Magic Leap is still quite a work in process, uh, progress? Um, obviously, some of the first reviews that came out and from tech reviewers, and obviously we know tech reviewers can be quite cynical, that's it's in their nature, um, but some were fairly lukewarm. How do you kind of deal with that? And is it just about getting more of these kind of examples out there to showcase its capabilities? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, you know, I think we were actually very happy with uh, how we launched um, in the fact that we are a developer product. I think sometimes there was a little bit of conflation because of the fact that we were quiet for a while. No one knew what we were making, so there was a lot of chatter, uh, you know, and, well, and, the and money conversation, and right? And the people filling involved. in the blanks of where we weren't talking. Perhaps folks were speculating a lot. And so once we, you know, as I said uh, a while ago, it's like we're quiet until we have something really good to say. Uh, you know, that's something that my grandma said to me, and you know, that, that's one of the uh, one of the strategies that we employed. We were fairly quiet. Uh, you know, because we wanted to wait until we were really ready to speak to the world. Um, and since then, uh, you know, things have been going really great. Um, we, we've launched to the right audience, which are the developers, the makers, um, and they have embraced us in a way that, uh, quite frankly, has even surprised me, the rate of adoption. Not only adoption, but brand love, which as a marketer is what we're looking for, right? It's like we want to, you know, really sort of uh, you know, create that level of affinity for your brand that they, they buy into the mission, you know, and they want to actually come on board with us and help us build this ecosystem. So the sort of things that we've been seeing, hopefully for those of you, like take a look, like go to your Instagram, go to your Twitter feed, or even go to LinkedIn, and just, uh, you know, do search for, under Magic Leap. And the type of, uh, you know, brand identification selfies that you'll see are pretty incredible. I don't know if we actually have any of those videos. I don't think we do, uh, just based on the, the nature of the time that we have today. But, you know, that has been something that has been a joy for us to see. It's just this level of brand love that's starting to really form. And we're just starting. And when do you anticipate that brand love um, transforms into mainstream consumer love? Yeah. How many years out are we for that? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. It's like we, we certainly, a lot of it is, is making sure that we monitor that, that content velocity, if you will. I mean, certainly the idea of the ecosystem needing to get to a certain level before you feel confident with this idea of opening it up to, uh, you know, to consumers. You want to make sure that you learn, let's say, from maybe some of the stumbles from others that have been in this space. So we want to really make sure that we put that rigor uh, into understanding what content works for consumers um, by planting lots of seeds right now on our platform and seeing which ones tend to grow. Um, and then being able to make sure that we warm the market up enough yeah. to be able to let those folks, those 80 other percent of the folks in the room right now, let's say that weren't even, uh, that don't quite know what mixed reality is, we have a lot of marketing work to do in terms of educating um, yeah. to bring you along. So that's the work that will be done before we're ready to launch. And those kind of small steps that you're taking, was that some of the reason behind the price point as well at this stage? Was, was, was that some of the thinking that went into it? It's $2,229, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as it, in terms of it being a B2B product, it's actually quite competitive with, with other products that are in the marketplace right now for developers. It's really sort of considered a maker's kit, you know, if you will, um, as well as early, super early tech adopters. There's nothing that stops you from purchasing. You could go to magicleap.com yeah. and you can see that it's, it's very much our messages to those that are makers right now. So, yeah. That price point makes sense. Okay, and one thing I wanted to talk to you about is it actually harks back to the um, the Magic League conference that, that you held a little while ago that you mentioned earlier. 
You talked about inclusion in AR and well, in, in mixed in XR, sorry, yeah. um, in mixed reality. Sure. I, well, I want to know what that means and what Magic Leap is doing to encourage that. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I'm glad you asked. It's like because we that was one of the things that I talked about um, in our keynote at the conference is the fact that we want to build a different type of ecosystem. I mean, quite frankly, there's not a lot of women. Uh, you know, who are developers or even CMOs, quite frankly, that look like me, um, that have the opportunity to sit in, in this chair. So again, thank you, Web Summit, for um, allowing me to be here. And, you know, our founder in his bones, you know, absolutely feels um, as passionately as I do right now, uh, you know, speaking to you all here in the audience, that we get the opportunity to do things differently. Um, you know, our developer conference, we scanned the room um, and, you know, quite frankly, our, our CEO was hoping for a 50-50 type of, of uh, you know, mix of male, female developers and creators, and that was really difficult to do. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we, we work intentionally, um, you know, to, to change that, to change mm -hmm. that narrative, to change that mix of the ecosystem. So we're very focused on, on doing so. Sure. Um, one thing I wanted to end on, as we've only got a couple of minutes left now, um, I was reading an interview with you recently, and you said, we're not focused on the next quarter, but the next quarter century. Um, and I'm not sure if any of you ever see the stats on the average tenure for a CMO, or if any of you work for public companies, but um, a quarter of a century seems quite a far way out to do marketing sure. planning and media planning. So <laughs> as a marketer, what did you mean by that? Yeah, no, it's a good question. And you're right, CMO chairs are always fairly hot, right? I'm sure there's a lot of us in the room that, that understand that, uh, you know, the, the nature of needing to, to produce, mm -hmm. right? But also the nature of a CMO is to, uh, you know, to sort of take the mission, take the vision, um, have that 10,000 year plan, but yeah. you also have to actualize a three-year operating plan. We all have boards of directors and, uh, you know, and, and company goals and objectives that need to be met. So you have to, again, use that left brain, right brain skill of making sure that you, that you have a really great, robust, uh, you know, data-driven operating plan, but you also need to make sure that you're continuing to drive that vision. Otherwise, the ecosystem will never grow. And would you encourage other marketers to do that? I mean, that, it makes perfect sense when you're building something new and you're working in a startup and you're in that environment. Um, obviously, in your, your previous life, you've worked at kind of legacy media companies. Would you encourage all marketers to have that kind of real long-term vision? Oh, absolutely. It's like we, it's like, look, it's like great marketing today has to be a motive, right? If you're not evoking some level of emotion, then you're just in the pack with everyone else. Um, and the fact that as a marketer, we have so many more tools uh, it's at our disposal to be able to make sure that you get it right. But it is about making sure that the data allows you to be able to create totally emotive, uh, you know, campaigns and messaging that really resonate. So I, I absolutely encourage that of all of the marketers that have been a part of my team. And, and I'm sure that the rest of the marketers that are in the room would uh, agree with me on that. Fantastic. A lovely, positive note to end on. Unfortunately, we're all out of time. Thank you very much for joining us and give a big round of applause Thanks, to Brenda Freeman, CMO of Magic Leap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.